certain injuries that she could well be a, a reserve for the vault final, but uh, going for a five difficulty here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said before, she's um, <clears throat> definitely one to look for, a look to in the future. You know, she's got great potential and she trains with uh, me and Rebecca Tunney yeah. um, at the City of Liverpool. So, um, you know, she's definitely one to look out for. OK, well, let's turn our attention now to the women's all around. We'll have a little look at uh, who's in store for us here. So uh, let's have a look. First of all, uh, this is the vault start list where we're just talking, obviously, about Ruby Harold there. So that's where she's starting. Should be a good start. Nice to get rid of the nerves on Vault there, Hannah. Yeah, Vault's like? always yeah. a good piece to start on. You know, it's kind of a steady, steady piece to start. Okay, over to bars then. There we go. We can see the uh, all the gymnasts there competing on bars. And uh, who would you pick out there? So, Charlie Fellows, obviously, is. Uh, the British gymnast we were just talking about, but um, it's quite an interesting group, obviously two Ukrainians there as well, but um, you kind of want the top guns to be in your group, don't you, just so you can keep the sights on them, or do you want gymnasts that are very much matched to your capabilities? Um, I think it depends on the gymnasts really, some gymnasts like to just focus on themselves and they won't really watch what anything else is going on, Yeah. Um, whereas you get other gymnasts that like to know, you know what, what, what they need to get to you know, kind of beat their competitors. Okay, let's run on to Bean then. Mustafina, an obvious name to pick out there. Your Dasher, this is a great group, isn't it? With the three and not Gullimar in there as well. Yeah, definitely the two Romanians and the Russians are the ones to look out for in this uh, in this rotation. Yeah. And how how daunting is it for you then when you are competing with the likes of the Romanians, with the Russians? Because I mean, they are the two the two top groups they're qualifying as. Oh, definitely. Um, I know uh, Mustafina's always been one of my favourite gymnasts to watch. So it's kind of hard to. Yeah. Watch her when you're competing. And Grishina, I mean, just she's such yeah. a brilliant, beautiful gymnast to watch there. So she's starting on floor there. So all in all, where are you going to put your money on this one? Um, I mean, it's difficult. Um, I know the two Romanians came out on top, but the Russians always uh, tend to hold back a little bit in qualifications and kind yeah. of bring it, bring it all on the, the finals day. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, is that is that more of a, a tactic to kind of hold back on the difficulty and just say, you know what, we're going to play it safe, we're going to try and get into the finals, and then we can really go for it in the long run. Possibly, um, it's hard to say. I know I don't think they intentionally um, make mistakes or fall or no, you know, hold no. back. But, but you um, can you can opt for a, for think, an easier routine, yeah. can't you? I mean, Lewis, obviously, you it was we were always having conversations, weren't we? Which one are you going to go for? Are you going to go for easy? Let's keep you guessing. Back? Yeah, yeah it's it? nice to have that backup. And I think what's strong about the Russians is. I th you know, that, that we're no strangers to knowing that they train religiously, so yes. there's always, they're always going to be very, uh, very stable and very consistent, which I think uh, which, which sets them you know, apart from the rest of the people yeah. that yeah. compete. And the noticeable difference, obviously, between men's and women's gymnastics is the age difference as well. I mean, what do you put that down to? Because you're doing much more difficult skills at a younger age than these lads, even though they probably won't want to admit it. Well, I wouldn't say it's more difficult, <laughs> but... No, but come on, I mean, two Olympics at the age of what now, 20? 20, yeah. You see? How old were you at your first Olympics? Uh, 23. Yeah. Well, yeah. What do you put that down to, I mean? Um, I'm, not sh I'm not really sure. I mean, it's, it's gymnastics. It's always been a young sport for men and women, but um, yeah. for the females, I guess, it's, it is easier for us when we're smaller. Right. And you know, our frames, bodies are smaller and younger. And I think they go through puberty a lot earlier. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a younger age sport, but I think the women are more developed to, to handle the types of pressure and, and the, mm. the impact that the sport's going to be given to them, whereas we kind of develop a lot later. And obviously just the four pieces of apparatus uh, on the women's side as opposed to the six, which to be honest with you leaves a lot less room for any mistakes, isn't it, Hannah? Yeah, I mean, it is, it's kind of, you know, if you fall, that's, it's almost like that's it. I mean, depending on you know what you start by you is, is yeah, yeah. it's a bit risky. So there's uh, Ali Mustafina there, just getting all set and ready to go. She's had a bit of a well, a bit of a controversy off, off the back of the Olympics. Her uh, her coach left the team because they said that he spent too much time with her, and it all gets a little oh, bit people getting jealous. Come on, politics yeah. involved. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't stop, does it? It doesn't indeed. OK, so we're all buckled in then and ready to go. Obviously, Max Whitlock did incredibly well with the silver in the men's all-around. What will the British women have in store for us in this all-around competition? Well, we will join Christine Still and Craig Hink in the commentary box. And here we have a little look at Grishina, one of the Russian stars. She, the, the draw, and it's a draw here, means that she's opening on floor very heavily strapped really round the calves and uh, both the Russian gymnasts had some problems in qualification. Uh, they still 
ended up in the uh, top four. They still ended up third and fourth. Anastasia Krishina was actually uh, third in qualification, but she can improve on that. So here we go. Opening tumble. Falling back out and out the floor. Beautifully classical gymnasts. Lovely spin with the leg held high. Second tumble, whip into a triple twist, much better landing, much more control there. Saw the turn there straight into the tumble. Round off flick, two and a half twist, step forward into the rest of the dance of the routine. Finale round of flick, double pipe back. What a nice finish. A beautifully classical performer to classical music. She's wonderfully stretched, feet pointed all the time. But she had a bit of deductions on some of the tumbles. And what we're looking at there for the deductions for going outside the floor? Well, when one foot goes out, it's a point one. So here we look at this, full twisting double back, so she lands. One foot out, point one. She managed to keep the other one in. Had it joined it, it would have gone up to a point three deduction. So she kept it ve relatively tight there. That was the nice two and a half. But we have a new rule on the women's side. You can't just stand in the corner, gathering your breath, and then tumble from two feet. You have to move from one foot with a bit of a turn. And uh, she sort of only just fulfilled that criteria, I would have said. Yeah, there was a slight hesitation in the corner almost. I'll just wait, even though I'm not facing the direction, I'll turn around and go. But uh, apart from the start of the routine, I think that was a very solid performance and very accurate on the tumbles. Very nice. She did a beautiful triple spin in the middle there. And uh, of course, the spins and leaps count just as importantly as the tumbles. You can see a little bit of... Uh, Massage there, get the legs working. So, an important opening routine, important for the judges as well. They now see it and set their standard on that routine. Here we have Larissa Yordash from Romania, the leader in qualification. Romanians so famous for their confident beam work. Let's have a look. Superb full twist. Just as if it was a single tuck back somersault. And a round off straight back. Lots of difficulty. And a difficult spin as well. The gymnasts have to include eight elements and only five of these can be acrobatic. The other three have to be leaps and spins. And uh, the chain shake half that she had the little wobble on would be one of those more confident on the acrobatic skills. Lovely free walkover. And that, the leap series that has to be included. Two leaps linked together. see your dash is enormously confident on all the acrobatic skills not quite so secure when it comes to the dance elements the spins and leaps but here watch this dismount round off backflip triple twist clean as can be really superbly confident great start really 
lovely routine and I'm watching some of the elements there almost making it look like she's on the floor there's a round off uh, straight back somersault and then here we go again yeah spots the beam finishes off not a wobble in sight and great dance I'm looking at that thinking the execution and the arm positions look really well performed Yes, just a couple of wobbles, one on a spin, one on a change egg half, but, you know, always difficult to open on beam. And here is Alia Mustafina, great favourite of gymnastic uh, fans around the world. In qualification, 11.666 on this piece of apparatus, so obviously not as good a performance in qualification and she'll be wanting to improve on that greatly especially if she wants to walk away with the title today. Yes, I think it will be a fight between these two gymnasts. Here we are, 14.833 for your dash. So, Mustafina's got it all to do now. Alia Mustafina from Russia. She's got some fantastic difficult links but of course with the difficulty comes the risk the Arab oh the Arabian somersault she managed to hold on that's very difficult one of the most difficult skills you'll see on the beam very nicely performed Ooh. Oh, well done. That's such a difficult series. Three elements together. She went for broke. Here we go. Flip, tuck back. Gymnasts have to do an acrobatic series. Two flighted moves together. 0.5 deduction if they don't. Smoothly, free walk over into the two jumps. The new judging system gives quite a lot of bonus marks for linking elements together. She got that first big series, but she's paused on the second two. But considering in qualification there were two falls, if she can land the dismount, she'll be very happy. The whistle, the bell says 10 seconds to dismount. Here we go, round off, double tuck. Yes, what, a, what an improvement. You can hear the whole audience with her on that. Well, she doesn't look too happy with that performance, to be honest, but uh, like you say, a massive improvement from the start. And there's Grishina's 13.866. Noel Van Claveren, the first vaulter we see. Attacking the vault, Yuchenko double twist. And a few steps back on the landing. Just look at the push off the top there. Not a bad height, nice and tight in the air. Just puts her feet under her too much on the landing and did well not to fall over there. She actually wraps the second twist in quite late, doesn't she? She comes off, you look like she's going to stop there and then whips the second twist in, but it's nice and clean. Yeah, very clean and well saved. 14.366 for the young gymnast from Holland. And now, our first look at Ruby Harold, the top British qualifier. Let's have a look, powers down. It's Yachenko, full twist, very neat, very clean. Not a lot of deduction on that. Off the top there, extends in the full twist, showing lots of time in the air, one step back. Not the highest difficulty vault, but executed very well. Yes, Ruby has competed in the past, a double twist, but she's had ankle injury, so she's uh, sort of really just regaining her full power on vault. And 13.9, good, good score for that vault. She didn't give many marks to the judges there. Yeah, very solid performance there. And you can see that there's another full twist. Uh, it could be slotted into that. So a very, very good opening performance and very smart to protect the ankle.
So we're waiting for a score for Alia Mastafina. Here it is, 14.4. A huge improvement on her opening score, on her score in qualification, which was 11.66. So she's a very happy gymnast. And here, Eliza Meneghini from Italy. This young gymnast is the current junior European champion. She won that title last year. And a very exciting young prospect. Here we see the free walkover joined to the very difficult sheep jump where you take your head right back. Two flips into the layout, somersault beautifully smooth. Italian gymnasts are usually very accomplished on B. Lovely supple gymnast and you s no hesitation on that linkage. The change leg into the tuck back somersault. Free cartwheel, straight into two jumps. The judges have to join, uh, decide whether that joined or whether there was a pause. But she's been very confident. Oh, just that little hesitation on the side somersault. Has to focus hard here. Change leg with a quarter turn. One of the three dance elements that goes to her total difficulty level. Good secure round off. High double back, very nice dismount, chest well up. Well, that was very efficient beam work. Great work and uh, just proves why uh, junior European champion. Uh, she's very small. If you look, the beam is only 1.25 metres and she almost had to jump to get up to the beam, but very elegant uh, on the beam there. You can see the wonderful foot placement. The idea is to keep your feet firmly placed forwards along the beam, except, of course, when you're doing something like that, a side somersault where the feet need to land sideways. See, she, her first foot was forwards, and sometimes the judges won't credit the side summy if you land a bit like that. I thought the dismount was great, chest right up on landing. Beautiful height in the double pipe back. Plenty of time to spot the floor, open out for a great landing. Opened out in the right time. Sometimes the gymnasts wrap in a bit too long and stagger back, but that was a lovely performance, and I'm sure she'll be very pleased with that routine. Yeah, so this is her first year as a senior. Seeing the emergence of quite a lot of the juniors coming forward, really being very exciting. And here another Italian, Giorgia Campana. She powers down the runway. That's a Yuchenko full twist, very nice. Uh, dead in the middle on the landing, as you can see here, reaches back, blocks off the top and lands pretty much bang in the middle there. Not the highest difficulty in vault, but executed rather well. Yes, and 13.9, same score as Ruby Harold. So uh, the judges tend to get into a groove. And uh, Diana Bullimore from Romania just stands waiting for the judges to be ready. I sort of compare the, the beam to the, the men's pommel horse. Here we are, 14 for Eliza Meneghini. You're right, Craig. The beam is the one where the merest hesitation can cause a problem. I like this look, straight backward roll. The gymnasts actually have to do several elements low to the beam, even if it's just dance, but they do have to spend some time low to the beam. Here we are, flip, straight back somersault. Now that was a very nice change leg with a half turn, cleanly round with the feet. Strong free walk over. Very precise in all her movements. Every moment choreographed, she knows exactly where every finger should be at every moment of the routine. Nice, light travelling movements. Do 
gymnasts, of course, have to show elements that go backwards and uh, forwards and sideways. Here we go. One, two, lovely big double pike dismount. Now that routine really didn't have a flicker, did it? That was fantastic performance there. Nailed every element and great dance, great execution in the leaps, the height of the legs, showing great flexibility. Lovely little start at the beginning, Christine. I love that little backward roll over there. Just shows a little bit of flair and originality. There's, um, on the, uh, after each Olympics, the judging is revamped a little bit. And this time they're asking to see much more fluency in the dance area. Elisa and Larissa Hammermeer from Austria. 5.2 difficulty on the vault. Forward entry. A full twist in Sukahara. Uh, the first one we've seen today strikes the top of the vault, blocks off, full twist, and lands slightly off centre, uh, but nothing to worry about and executed pretty good. Pretty well. 13.933. Lacks a little bit of height. Usually the Sukahara entry, the half turn on, lacks a little of height. And here we have our first chance to look at Charlie Fellows and see the Union flag on the back of her leotard. 13.1 in qualification. Uh, coach will be there with her, just making sure that the bars are, are ready. They're Claire Duffy. Yes, yeah, she's at uh, Liverpool Gymnastic Club, as Hannah was saying. Training with Hannah. Big new bar routine this for Charlie. Lots of difficulty. Hits a very good first handstand and lovely chapeau sneaker up to the top bar to the low. Hits the handstand well, back up to the high bar. So she's fulfilled some of her requirements already. Super ginger somersault. Another good handstand turn and into the invert swing the gymnasts have to show two different grips that's her second grip lovely half out this is a big combination the half turn into the toe on and kachev difficult work full pirouette just a little bit offline lovely swing half turn watch out for the dismount she's winding up there kicks high super super double straight that was a very good start for charlie fellows fantastic performance there such maturity in that routine and uh, great transition between the top bar and the low bar and and back up to the top uh, big release and catch as we can see there look at this hecked up to the top bar catching extending out into the upstart winding up for a big dismount i mean this is a big dismount for the girls a double layout and spots are landing very well very mature performance very nicely and that we had a quick shot of uh, becky downey supporting her becky of course is in the bars final later in the weekend and diana bullimar 14.4 so they obviously deducted a little bit for lack of artistry yep point four behind a teammate uh, but the Romanians so far leading the field. We've obviously got a little problem with the music here. Julia Steingruber from uh, Switzerland, renowned vaulter, but here she is on the floor exercise. What a big tumble. Full twisting double straight for an opener. Great power. And coming back the other way. And another double layout. Super high, full turning jump as well. Third tumble, round off flick, double twist, intermediate jump. Five 
Final pass. Ran a flick. Double pipe back. Step forward. Cracking routine with the tumbles there. Really impressive first tumble. As difficult as you'll see from any of the gymnasts here today. Double straight with full twist. That was really very impressive. And super leaps as well in the first part. Brilliant. If we just watch again here. Really strong setup. Full twist in double back straight. And if we remember from the morning competition, we didn't see many of the guys doing that. So really powerful tumbling. And then as you can see, coming back this way. There you go. Full twist. Double back straight. A little bit loose in the legs, but at that speed you won't be able to see. And we're going to let her off with a powerful tumble like that. And then picking up there into the double pipe back. Little step forward to finish. Great tumbling. Now, I'm quite interested that these gymnasts, we've worked a lot in Great Britain on the corners of the gymnasts working into the corner and straight out. Now, they're mostly just standing instead of on two foot on one foot, and they're paying absolute lip service to it. Here we are, Charlie Fellows, 13.2, little bit up on her qualification score, so that's great. Yeah, very interesting how the judges will interpret the, the pause in the corner of not being allowed anymore. There are only 0.1 deductions, but you know, if you do that three times, that's 0.3. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. It's the first major championships with these new rules. Maybe be a little bit harsher in the apparatus final. We will see, we will see. So the gymnasts now move round to the next apparatus where they'll get a, uh, a warm up, a quick warm up to feel the apparatus. Floor, the gymnast from floor move to vault and the vault to bars it's a prescribed order always go in that order and it's uh, quite a, a prescribed warm up as well just two vaults allowed the timer and then you turn your difficult vault or Gymnasts and coach will have decided on the strategy before they start. So Julia Steingruber's score is in. If you like that routine, then you can see it again in the floor final. But this is how things stand after the first piece of apparatus then. So Jordash, unsurprisingly, is out in the lead ahead of Bulimar, Mustafina. Well, they're joint second. And then down in fourth, Claverin. And then the young Italian in fifth. And now she's just come through from the... Um, from the, from the junior ranks, but let's carry on and we'll talk about Ruby Harold. He's saying she was, well, she's joint seventh now, 13.9, and then Charlie Fellows is in 16th. There you go. So yeah, the young Italian then, just coming up through from the uh, from the junior ranks there. Is it is it a massive step from the juniors through to the seniors when you're working with gymnasts that are still relatively pretty young? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, she's, she'll only just be 16 this year, yeah. so, um, you know, senior debut, and, uh, you know, it's great for her to bring out that beam score. I mean, Italians are known for their great beam workers, so, you know, it's a good piece for her to start on. Yeah, and a great settling start then for, for Ruby Harold, and, of course, for, uh, for Charlie Fellows. It was interesting seeing Becky Downey, who uh, turned up to do the bit of, bit of chalking on the bars, and you had that job, didn't you, for Beth? Yeah, it's, it's quite an, uh, an important role. Um, as a teammate, yeah, as, Lewis, yeah. as Lewis was saying before, you know, um, you've got to get the bars right for your teammates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel any pressure in that, right? Is it? Because you, you said to me, come on, be honest. You said it's the worst job in the world. Yeah, it's not the greatest job. Yeah. <laughs> it's it is. Kind it should of... have slipped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to get it right for my teammates. So we can see here then that Ruby's going to be up on uh, on bars. Then I wonder if um, Becky will be back out to chalk up for her. But um, she'll hope she did do well on this piece. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is one of uh, Ruby's best pieces, so um, hopefully she'll get a great good score for this. Are you surprised at how well the girls are doing so far in this competition? No, not at all. You know, they're, they're all both very talented gymnasts and got you know, a lot of potential, so um, yeah. to keep it up. And the great we saw her look so confident, really, on bars, didn't she, Charlie, to start with. Now she's moving over to beam. Obviously, it's a little bit shaky. We heard Craig in commentary compare beam to pommel horse, um, but obviously it's something that you obviously quite thrive in that situation with. Yeah, I mean, you know, Palm Horse is a very nerve-wracking piece, and I'm sure Beam is the equivalent. Um, you know, she just needs to enjoy herself, 
uh, you know, so probably her yeah, first major, major competition. Yeah. So she just needs to go out there, enjoy it, you know, don't worry about the stress, use the vibe that the boys have set, you know, early on in the competition and just get on with it. Yeah, and some of the, well, the top guns, the big guns going on, on the floor next. I mean, is this a piece of apparatus that you particularly enjoy performing, Hannah? I mean, obviously you've got the music, get the crowd behind you, all that kind of stuff. Although yeah. it has to be said, it doesn't look like there's that many people there. It's definitely one of my favourite pieces to perform. You know, you get a bit of personality out in your routines and um, with the new code now, artistry is um, a lot more prominent. So um, it'll be interesting to see what... Um, gymnasts have changed about their routines to make it a bit more of a performance. OK, well, it looks like the warm-up time is over, so let's rejoin Christine Still and Craig Heap in the commentary box. Oh, well, you can see uh, Julia Stein Huber having her legs worked on there. She's got a bolt next, which is her big piece. Sound for the gymnasts, the end of the warm-up. Roxana Popanedescu from Spain, their best gymnast in this competition. A little fall out of the spin there. She works into the corner, prepares for her first tumble. Falling back out with plenty of room. Into the corner, prepares for the second. Round off, whip, 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 flick, flick, double tuck. Change leg ring and the change leg half, the series of leaps you have to include. Good effort at the double spin. for the third tumble, round up flip, two and a half twist, punch front, very clean, straight back into the dance part of the routine. Round up flip, double pike, slight hop back. Very powerful gymnast, you can see from her tumbling, she's almost so powerful that she struggles to harness it. I mean, she didn't barely get halfway across the floor area before she'd done the full twisting double back in that first tumble. She really is very powerful. Yes, yeah. it's, it's very rare that you see so many flicks uh, and whips in a combination there. We saw, look, whip, whip, flick, flick, double tuck, and she still had plenty of room left in the floor. And of course, there's a bonus for linking elements like that. But bonuses are only really point ones and point twos, but they do add up quite well. You could see how she just kicked out of the tuck front there. Absolutely, two and a half twists wrapped in nice and tight, and then finishes with the double pike. Very clean and solid routine with that performance. So happens from that overhead view. You can see there's nothing going on in the arena at the moment. The first gymnasts have all competed. It sort of evens itself out as it goes. And as the judges uh, prepare their scores, the gymnasts have the time then to go and choke up, maybe gather their thoughts, maybe a last minute words of uh, wisdom from the coach. Uh, I just you know, I wonder what the coaches be saying to their gymnasts. All right, I realise what's happened here. On the bars, you are actually ma allowed 50 seconds each. And uh, if you're a tall gymnast, you're allowed the bars being put up, which I guess might well have happened. So this is still the warm-up. Although we've had the first floor routine, the other pieces are just allowed a three-minute warm-up. But the bars are allowed 50 seconds each because every gymnast is allowed to prepare it as they wish. So uh, we're a little ahead on floor. However. Which is great because we're now going to see Alia Mustafina.
very dramatic floor worker. Double Arabian immediately into a leap. Fantastic spatial awareness there. Back into the corner. Powers down. Two and a half twist, full twist. So graceful. Oh, fabulous triple spin. Turn immediately there into the third tumble, round off flake, double tuck, landed very safely. corner big deep breath round of flick triple twist a little bit untidy in the legs there but well spotted on the landing great feeling in that routine Mustafina was the bronze medalist on floor at the Olympic Games and you can see all the class that she has in this routine such a popular and polished gymnast she, of course, as a junior, was the absolute darling of uh, world gymnastics, suffered a terrible knee injury in the 2011 Europeans, actually during the competition, uh, injured her knee, which required surgery and took really a year and a half to get back from. So, you know, everybody in gymnastics, their hearts are with her, want to see her succeed. But even those can't miss yeah, it's a part on the triple twist at the end. That was such an obvious mistake, but uh, the performance I thought during the routine was of such confidence, and I think it shows the levels of maturity between the older gymnasts and the younger ones. And uh, thirteen point six three three for Popper, and this is the big Volta, Julia Steingruber from Switzerland, qualified top on vault with 15.3 in the qualification, a 6.2 start value. So if it's anything like we've seen on the floor, this should be pretty impressive. Presents to the judges. Fast run up. Handspring, one and a half twist, very powerful, very dynamic, a very safe bolt. Beautiful flight, beautiful shapes. I think that was a job well done. And 14.466. Not a bad score. Slight, slightly higher than in qualification. Mustafina seems to be rising to the occasion. <laughs> Very much so, yes. I think. Uh, Actually, the Russian gymnasts did not work terribly well in qualification. They all had some sort of mistakes, but uh, here on the home ground and having watched the men work so well uh, earlier in the day, they look like they've come out knowing there's a job to be done. And you know, sometimes when you're on a home soil, the crowd can be a bit daunting, the expectation of the crowd, and sometimes it can be totally uplifting. And uh, let's hope that's what it's going to be for these gymnasts today. Have a little look here at Anastasia Krishina. We saw her floor earlier. And uh, Julia Steingruber, 15.066. Very impressive score on the vault. You just look at the build between the gymnasts. And uh, obviously, Krishina, a lot slighter gymnast than Steingruber. So we'll have to work extra hard on the vault. 5.8 difficulty. I'd imagine she'll go for a Yuchenko. Powers down the runway. Yeah, Yuchenko, two and a double twist off the top, spotted beautifully. And that was very good vault. I mean, we're. In gymnastics, a lot of people talk about the two and a half twisting uh, 
double, uh, the two and a half twisting Yushchenko, which many of the Americans do, and not many of the Europeans have uh, managed to come up with that. But a double twist like this really has very little deductions. It won't qu score quite as much as the two and a half, but she's uh, beautifully tight, blocks off the top with straight arms, wraps in strongly, brings the arms out to steady the landing. There really isn't a lot for the judges to deduct for. Uh, that is a fantastic vault for somebody so small. She really powers off the top of the vault, accelerates down the runway. Great vaulting. And uh, Ilaria Kayslin, the other Swiss gymnast, very young gymnast, going on the bars here. Smooth handstand. Nice shoot down to the low bar, straight into stall the fall. That was a good combination of elements. Just a little bit short on the shoot up. That's a good high catch of as well. Very nice work. Swinging cleanly. The half turn, then the forward element. Gymnasts have to have a forward as well as backward element. And they have to have a full pirouette. That was a tiny bit late. But a nice high double pike somersault. Not of the highest difficulty, but really well executed. Lovely line in the handstand, a very nice flat back shape, what the judges are looking for. I don't know whether you managed to pick that up, but it sounded to me like she might have just clipped the bar, the low bar, just before the dismount. And the score's coming in there for Grishina, 14.9 on the vault. So not quite in the 15s of uh, Steingruber, but you know, 14.9. She was out of 5-3, it was, she didn't give much away. And up on qualification, Diana Bullimore. Watch carefully, Craig, this first tumble. This is one of my favorite little gymnasts. Double layout with absolute ease into the corner. What a powerhouse. Round of flick, one and a half, walk out into round of flick, double back. Really working well with the music. And running, taking almost the same pass as a tumble for the leaps. Giving it plenty of time and height. Pulling back out piped. Very powerful tumbling for such a small gymnast. Lovely height and extension in the free cartwheel. Fantastically difficult leap into the corner there. There we see the arabesque into the tumble. Double pipe back, final tumble. What about that then? I like, I agree with you, Craig. I like, you know, the style of the Romanians is not so classical, but they always perform routines that, you know, difficult tumbling, but it doesn't look like it destroys the routine. It's part of the routine. And that's so impressive. I mean, double straight and, you know, there's just nothing really. Well, I suppose she had a fraction of part, feet apart. Not that you could see when she was actually uh, going in full speed. But look, this is slow motion and look how fast it is. Super high, double tuck back. And then immediately out into the dance. There's no, you know, gather yourself, drag yourself up off the floor into the next bit. For me, that was a beautiful routine, Christine. And we looked at uh, the new rule of going into the corner and not pausing. For me, that's the only floor routine that I've seen obey the new rules. Yes. And there, Ilaria Kayslin, 13.166. That reflects that it wasn't the most difficult, but uh, a good score. It's turning into a bit of a, uh, a two-horse a two race with the Romanians and the Russians uh, really fighting for the top spot. That's always as it has been in, uh, in the Europeans. Occasionally, us, Great Britain and the Italians have been able to mix it up a little bit and uh, but Romania and Russia historically have been the powerhouses 
Here we have Giorgia Campana from Italy. Out to perform on the asymmetric bars. Turns to invert, very nice swinging in the forward position, full turn. Lots of swings, another one now into the Jaeger somersault, the front somersault to regrasp. I sort of expected that to appear a bit earlier, but that was good. Now the shoot down and shoot up, those are the two transitions on bars from between the bars that you have to show. Nice turn and off into handstand and double straight. Just, she held the first somersault straight, but piped the second one in. The judges can sometimes be quite um, harsh about that and turn, call that only a double pike, but it was good swing. Well, I thought it was a very fluent routine. There wasn't much pause or she was down to the bottom bar, straight back up to the top again. A real nice tempo and the difficulty of the transition doing the full turn into the invert swings where actually your, your hand placement's a lot more difficult than doing a normal forward swing uh, into the Jaeger with, with super height. And here a score for Diana Bullimore. 14.233, so for all that difficult tumbling, she couldn't match the artistry of Alia Mustafina. And that's exactly what she scored in qualification, 14.233. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of marks to be given for uh, artistry now. And so back to the vault. And Maria Vargas from Spain. Five difficulty to Yuchenko with a full twist. And a very nice landing there, not the highest difficulty, but what a clean vault there. You see the round off, reach backwards, block off the top, full twist, very clean, should score reasonably well. Yeah, the, uh, and 13.833, perhaps a little bit short, but very clean work there. Georgia Campana, 13.933 for that bar routine, putting her up into sixth place. I think this is the girl who had to have the bars altered slightly, yep. so there might be a little delay, but the coaches are normally quite quick while the judges are coming up with the scores. Wait here. It's Jana Sikolova from uh, Czech who has the bars raised. And you can see Ruby Harold there with her coach Liz Kincaid from uh, the Academy Gymnastic Club in Portishead. And we move on here to Larissa Yordash on floor, the leader in qualification. First tumble, double twisting, double bike, nailed. Beautiful choreographer. Pulling back out, second tumble. Little step back, nothing major. Really selling this floor well. Superb height and lightness on the Leap Series. Round of flick, triple twist. And a quadruple spin. Very securely performed. Big effort for the last tumble. Round of flick, double tuck. Landed very nicely. What about that then? Really well choreographed routine. She used the music well, didn't she? Expressive through the face, everything. I, I thought that was excellent. She And you know, she's excellent on the dance things as well. That quadruple spin is very difficult. Her leaps are super high and her tumbling is fantastic. This is the double-double, I think. 
double somersault, double twist, and you know, talk about know your distance right into the corner. And there again, you can see she didn't stand on two feet in the corner and wait. Following the new rules, she moved from a dance position straight in. It's changed it a little bit for the gymnasts in that they have to be a bit more secure on their tumbling. They can't just stand in the corner and think, think, think. They have to be able to move straight into it. And a relatively straightforward final tumble, but beautifully landed. Beautiful routine, and uh, for an outsider's point of view, I prefer the new reel to the floor. We don't see the gymnast standing in the corner for such a long time, uh, and I think it keeps the whole floor, the routine, a lot better. And uh, she scored 14.4 in qualification, so uh, I think it should be somewhere around that. And she's, these gymnasts are so enormously fit. She's barely puffing after that fantastic floor routine. It's one minute, 30 seconds of constant movement with the most difficult skills dotted about. And uh, really, you can imagine the volume of work they've done to be able to perform a routine like that with such confidence. Phenomenal work. And the quadruple spin, imagine you had to go for a jog for 60 seconds and then spin around. You know, the difficulty in that is unbelievable. <laughs> nice little picture there of uh, spraying the bar. The gymnasts sort of spray the water towards the bar so that the bar isn't soaked, but it's moist. And then uh, put the chalk in exactly how they like. And as we were saying, Jana Sikolova, if you're over a certain height, you're allowed the bars to be put up one or two holes. But of course, it sort of delays the competition a little bit. Here, Octavian Ballou talking to uh, Larissa Yordash, and look at that score 14.866. The judges saw, thought the same as us, Craig. Well, I think we should maybe take up judging Christine because <laughs> uh, it was a fabulous routine and it was easy to see that that's the best floor routine we've seen today so far. I don't think the judging bit's hard when they're like that. You can <laughs> see the good ones. <laughs> it's when you have to choose between the not so good ones that's more tricky, I think. And. Uh, Certainly, that score uh, increases your dash's lead. Only two uh, pieces of apparatus the gymnasts have performed as yet. And we haven't quite had everybody performing two pieces of apparatus yet. So uh, we have to wait till they've all done just that. You can see the uh, gymnasts chalking up. They, they wear handguards. Most gymnasts wear handguards. You don't have to wear handguards for asymmetric bars, but most gymnasts choose to. When you work on bars, swing for an hour a day. The hands get warm pretty thin if you don't wear handguards. Uh, lots of blisters and lots of tears in the early days, uh, but I think your, your hands sort of build up a bit of a, a resilience to it. And uh, even the top guys, when they're training, uh, will be contending with blisters on a weekly basis. So it's really important that uh, you do wear some protection. I've noticed some of the girls use a bit of a bandage rather yep. than the leather guard. Uh, yeah. uh, different countries re will use different sort of things. The trouble is if, you, if they don't wear handguards, if they wear a bit of a bandage, they also like the bar scrubbed quite clean and chalk. So sort of within a team, you really want to have your whole team using the same sort of system so that they ah, are and here we go Noel Van Claveren from the Netherlands performing very nice turn off with half turn into a nice high front somersault to re-grasp the same bar it's one that, and the pack salto the transfer from the high bar down to the low little bit of loss of leg form on that shoot up to the high bar and the handstand and oh, now that was a late pirouette, you could see. But she recovered well. And oh, a bit of an alternative technique on that full twisting double back. And she sort of got stuck halfway round. I think she pulled into the bar a little bit too much there on the dismount. And uh, it was almost put the hands down to save myself. Uh, she did struggle through that routine. It looks like she might have caused a bit of injury. As you can see there, that first turn down was a bit late and then obviously it had an effect to the rest of the routine. Now she really struggled on the full turn that we saw and then I think just pulled in. We might just see here, look, she pulls in a little bit and it stalls in the air. Got a little bit disorientated there and then had to put her hands down, which will cost her heavily. 
Costa heavily, and you can see she did put a bit of a straight arm down. I don't think she's badly hurt, but it'll be a bit uncomfortable. Really twisted a little bit early, didn't she, off the bar. But quite difficult when you've had a long wait like that. She obviously, because the bar went up for the gymnast before her, it was a long wait she had for, for her performance. And she's a young gymnast. It will have been um, really quite a test for her. The coach is carrying the bags. The gymnasts just themselves and their performances to worry about. This is where the gymnasts really need to focus now. Two rounds down, two to go. Uh, checking up on the scoreboard that we wanted to see where they are. So after two pieces of apparatus, Larissa Yordashi stays out there in the lead, but things have changed just a little bit below. Julia Steingruber, after her two best pieces of apparatus, moves up into second. Mustafina stays in third. You can see Ruby Harold has moved up a place uh, from seventh into sixth. As things progress, and we think that Charlie Fellows is just on the next page there, down in 20th. Information of that will be coming up uh, very shortly as the gymnasts prepare to move on and have their little warm up. There you can see Charlie in 20th. So the third piece of apparatus. I mean, it's amazing, Hannah, to think that the competition is it's halfway over. Yeah, it does go quite quickly. I mean, um, it's a bit different when you're actually on the floor competing because you're totally focused on you know your routines. But yeah, um, when you think about it, it's only you know a minute, a minute and a half on each. Well, on three pieces and then 10 second vault, and then yeah, that's yeah. it. So you've got Mustafina here and Yordasha, they're going over to vault now. And I mean, we saw a phenomenal performance on floor from Yordasha. You think, where, when is it going to end? But actually, she's qualified for, for vault in, with the fourth highest score. Yeah, um, no, it was a fantastic floor team from uh, Lordash. And I know Mustafina and uh, Lordash have got um, the same start by you on vault. They're both doing double twist and Uchenkos. So it'll be interesting to see um, what scores they get. Yeah, and uh, we were just saying as well, uh, Lewis, that uh, Steingrim, she's done a, basically her best two, really, so she's put it all out there. I think she's moving over to bars now and uh, just expect to see her just drop down a little Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's a given. I mean, she, she went out there with her best performances, got great scores, gave herself the best chance. I think now she can really start to enjoy the rest of the competition and see where she can finish. Sure, well, um, Ruby Harold doing incredibly well. She's moving up a place. I mean, that's all you can ask, obviously. And here she is uh, on beam. She's in the beam final as well. Um, obviously, you're only allowed two gymnasts per country in there, so things kind of change a little bit after qualification. But, you know, she'll be looking to build on, on her score, obviously, here. Yeah, I know she got um, a personal best on beam in the qualification, so um, the same, if not better, will, will be a great achievement for Charlie on beam, uh, for Ruby on beam. Yeah, and then uh, and Charlie, for her third piece of apparatus on floor. How does she fare on floor? Um, it's actually one of her uh, best pieces, and you know, she's a great tumbler. Um, she had a fall in qualification, so I'm sure she'll be hoping to um, improve on that today. Yeah, it's it's an interesting dynamic this with the Europeans because it kind of piggybacks, doesn't it, from the kind of the all around to the team. And Christian, how 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 do you feel that works out within the British camp then? I think everyone sort of has adjusted to that's the system there, and that's how it works. And um, for me personally, I much prefer the, the, the team competition, but. The individual really gives you a, an opportunity to specialise in certain apparatus and to really go hard and, and push on with the uh, individual apparatus. So yeah. it's, uh, it's different dynamics, but uh, it is still an enjoyable competition. When I mean, you look at the likes of your dash there, I mean, it's obviously brilliant individually on all of the apparatus, and then you put her in the team as well. I mean, you've got a winning combination. Exactly, exactly. I mean, if, any, if you can sort of have a gymnast that can contribute on maybe two or three apparatus and then have other gymnasts that can contribute on one or two apparatus, then you can start to put together a, a really strong team and that's what the Romanians I think will be doing this year and next year. Yeah and you're always used to as a gymnast aren't you training in what's known as Olympic order so with this it's a little bit different because there's kind of this random draw that gets thrown in there do you think that will throw the gymnasts at all not actually being with those that they're competing with they're actually in different groups? Um, I think it depends on the gymnast um, I mean I'm one of those gymnasts who'll just focus on my own routines I don't really tend to look around uh, the competition arena and see what else is going on but I'm sure the likes of Mustafina is 
you know, looking out the corner of her eye at what Lord Ash is doing and yeah. you know what all the other top contenders are doing and making sure she's just ahead of them. Uh, exactly. Well, we will be uh, joining the gymnasts that are leading really on on vault here. This is uh, must have been a former world champion in the all around and obviously looking to build somewhat on her score with two pieces of apparatus left to go. Let's hand down to the commentary box with Christine Still and Craig Heath. And uh, Alia Mustafina stands at the end of the vault runway, ready to uh, emphasise her bid for this title. She was third all around at the Olympic Games, and I would say she's still coming back to her best. Yep, I totally agree with you there, Christine. 5.8 difficulty, scored 15 in qualification, certainly needs a good vault now. Powers down the runway, Yuchenko, double twist, nailed absolutely perfect, fantastic vault, look at that. Beautiful performance, uh, you know she, we have seen her compete before two and a half twists and in fact that was what she did, damaged her knee on in competition, so for, I think the double twist is well within her grasp and she made it look like it didn't she? Absolutely, uh, really really well powered down the runway, look at this. Good strike onto the vault there, reaches back, big block, double twist, very tight in the legs, and then nailed. And I think psychologically, knowing she's not doing the two and a half, gives her extra confidence. Look at that there, bang, two, double twist, lands. Tiny bit off direction, I mean, that the white line down the middle shows you if the gymnast is bang in line she was slightly off to one side but only a very small amount of point one deduction she had a tiny bit of a bent leg but there were no steps so she didn't give anything else away that was she'll be very happy with that absolutely and uh, keep the pressure on the top girls there little smile there 15.033 Ah, she's happy with those scores. Just bars left, which of course is her favourite apparatus. Yep. Next up, the young Italian. Eliza Meneghini. Five difficulty. Yuchenko, full twist, very nice. In the middle, slight hop back, but plenty of height. Very clean vault in there. And that's uh, probably a little bit the difference of the junior gymnast. You know, she won junior European championships last year, first year senior. I'm sure in training you're seeing double twists, but uh, not quite ready yet. And the wise coach uh, doesn't put it out until it's absolutely ready. But lovely technique, super straight body. Yeah, great height and block off the top. You, you're dead right there, Christine. That'll be doing double twisting training uh, all day long. But like you say, it's the maturity of the coach and the gymnast to realise, make it safe and do a good clean vault. There we are, 13.866. The full twist, of course, the double twist has a higher tariff, a higher start value. So... Uh, that's why it's worth doing the double twist, otherwise no one would. They just stick with the easy vault. And uh, the very little dynamic Romanian gymnast, Diana Bulimar. 5.8. It's going to be a Yuchenko, I imagine. There we go, wrapping, double twist. Slight step back offline. Not just as good as Mustafina for me, but uh, it'd be a reasonable score nevertheless. She's also a very tiny gymnast and very dynamic. Now, it was difficult to see from the angle, but I don't think her feet absolutely made the whole two twists. She's offline, actually, as she flips on, isn't she? Let's just see. No, no, they did. They did. There was no question mark. So, really, nice tight legs, nice sh body shape. It'll just be the uh, deduction for being slightly offline. And uh, if you notice from the block there on the replay, she was quite arched. Mm. And uh, I think she just twisted a little bit early. And then obviously she struggled to get, come round. 14.766. Yes, the judges agreed with you, Craig. Not quite as good as Mustafina's. And Naomi Makra from Hungary. Another gymnast who's uh, excited us in the junior ranks. 
Tichy on the uh, asymmetric bars. Super chapeau sneak of her, the flight back. Lovely hop. Really swings lovely here. Look how high that front somersault to regrasp was. Really very nice, tidy gymnast. Oh, and a big toe on catch up as well. She's got a real talent for the asymmetric bars, this gymnast. Links the skills excellently, generates swing and speed as she goes along. Tight there, a, a very, very late full pirouette. That will lose her some marks, but super, super double straight dismount. Lovely routine there. Yeah, third, oh, sorry, I, I missed, uh, just looked away, and they obviously ran that in. So that was... Uh, 13.466 there for the bars. 13.466. This is where all eyes will be focusing now on the vault. See if she can maintain the lead. Andrea Yordash. Yeah. She's a great vaulter. Larissa Yordash is great on three pieces. She's not so special on bars. So she knows she she's not too bad, but she's not so special. Yeah. So she knows she needs to build her lead over these first three pieces. She knows this vault needs to be almost faultless. 5.8 difficulty, so I'm probably guessing it's a Yuchenko double twist. That's right. Uh, so how well could she do it compared to her rivals? Let's see. Strong attack down the runway. Block up the top, very nice indeed. Yep, cracking vault. Very tidy, very neat. It's not always possible to see on the TV screen, but I think that didn't have quite the flight off the top that some we've seen. I just think she uh, she sort of brought the shoulders a little bit forward on contact. Let's have a look. Just, yeah, just slightly forward, but it was very, very clean. No question. A bit of a direction deduction again for being off line. But good shape. Good confidence, wasn't it? You never, you never felt you had to hold your breath. No, it, it was a very positive run up and approach to the vault. Blocked off the top, wrapped in there, made the double twist look easy. Slight crossing of the legs there and that step back. Probably not match Mustafina, but uh, I think close to 15, it won't be yeah. far off. I was going to say a high 14, I would suspect. She looks happy with life there. 14 9. We weren't, like you said, great. We're doing all right. Not too far off. And that uh, pops her into the lead ahead of Mustafina. Julia Steingruber, who was uh, second after the first two pieces of apparatus. What can she show us on the asymmetric bars? Swings back just a little untidy on the legs and forwards again. And with the half turn, the coach is allowed to stand there for safety. Smooth half turn into the markle of the release move across the bar. Just a bit late on that pirouette into the uh, King of Somersault. She's packing the difficulty in. Some of it just looking a tiny bit rushed. Half turn again, double front dismount, nice and high. She did very well with that routine. I was totally impressed with that, Christine. There, uh, Talk about packing in the difficulty from uh, all the release and catch elements that she put in. I think she did catch the bar in one of them uh, on the top bar. Whether the judges picked that up or not, and like you say, on that full turn into the King of Somersault, it was quite late on the turn, which will take a deduction. But jam-packed. Every time the gymnasts bend their elbows, you can see that, bent arms, then the judges can deduct. So a, a routine like this can actually, because again, she caught with quite bent elbows, can be heavily deducted. It, it's how they're, how they're applying the judging system or how strict they're being. But uh, it made it look a bit rushed, although it was difficult and exciting. I, I totally agree with you. And also it looked you know, like she was putting the effort in, that she was working hard <laughs> yeah. in that routine. She'd give it her all, which is always nice to see, I think, somebody putting a lot in. Yeah, 
but the secret of being a great gymnast <laughs> is make it look very easy. <laughs> if it looks hard, it probably um, accrues a few deductions. But I have to say, Julia Steingruber has made big progress since we saw her at the Olympic Games. Yep, and uh, Machina will be uh, next on the bars to lay her challenge. As you can see there, just applying the water, making sure that her grip will be perfect during the routine. And uh, last year on bars, Rashina was in fact, took the silver medal on bars. So she's a gymnast with um, plenty of pedigree on asymmetric bars. The Russians always are. It's, it's one of their favorite pieces of apparatus. It's, uh, you very, very rarely, well, I can't imagine, think I've ever seen a Russian gymnast who couldn't swing bars. I'm sure in their selection process, it's one of the absolute essentials. Well, it's a very technical piece, bars for the women. We were discussing earlier about the, the floor and the vault and the beam are very similar in terms of acrobatic skills where the uneven bars are very technical. And one thing the Russians are, are very technical in their coaching of gymnastics and uh, that has never changed. No, it hasn't changed. And you know, many Russian coaches now coach all around the world. Uh, one of the most famous, of course, being Valery Lukin in the USA. And uh, all the gymnasts they produce are always marked with a very um, technical expertise. There we are, 13.8 on the asymmetric bars. Not a bad score at all. Doing very nicely, still in fourth place. And here we have Anastasia Grishina. Lovely stoop in and out. And there you see dead straight arms into the full pirouette. Big Pike Kachev straight down into the somersault to the low bar. And the half turn, the, the flight from the low to the high with a half turn. Another big release, Pike Jager full of difficulty this routine. Lovely clean turn, swings now into the full twisting double back, not a flicker. Now that was class bar work. Very nice, very nice indeed. Look at that, a big smile, a high five of the coach very happy with that and uh, should hopefully push her right back amongst it uh, as they head into their final rotation like you say you can see the influence of russian gymnastics in every piece of that work so precise we just look here look at the height there on the pike kachev straight down into the pike to the bottom bar and the pause she gives herself when she hits her handstand, she hits such a perfect handstand that she can just pause a little and then start and give the next move maximum amplitude. And that, of course, is the skill of a great bar worker. Absolutely, a sign of real classic gymnastics. Look at that, fixed, bang, up to the handstand. Nice straight arms. There you go. Stoop full turn, half turn, into the Jaeger. High five from the coach, job done. Nice to see the gymnast smiling for once. So then the judges have the hard task. There's of course two judges doing the difficulty. They add up all the moves to give you the difficulty value because you don't actually uh, hand in your difficulty value. You don't hand in the tariff sheet. 15.033, very impressive score puts her into third position, Krishina. Turn into a bit of a, a fight at the top of the table now. Ida Gustafsson from Sweden, also very nice gymnast on the asymmetric bars. Beautiful handstand again and the swing back, straight back up to the handstand again of determination here good full pirouette into all oh, very nicely flighted somersault to recatch and all oh, short clear into the catch of very very difficult skill that gosh that's three difficult releases we've had in a row half turn she needs a good dismount now up she goes full twisting double back she makes it that was, it wasn't, didn't quite have the poise of Grishina, but that was packed full routine. Really nice to see the uh, 
Swedish gymnasts here getting amongst it. I mean, that routine didn't look out of place whatsoever. And some great flighted release and catches there and not just catching close to the bar, which will be deducted. The, the judges are looking for the gymnast to catch at full strength and uh, plenty of flight. There we can see clear circle into the full turn very accurate there kicks way up into the ginga somersault at full stretch catch very good the swedish gymnasts have been promising for some time they've had good juniors for quite a while and now they're starting to make good senior gymnasts as well bars are always their best piece roxana popper Nedeku from Spain. 5.8, probably another Yuchenko. There we go, pop off the top. Double twist, very nice. One slight step on landing, but a very compact Yuchenko. One of the best double twists we've seen, I think, there, Craig. It's a bit difficult to tell the distance, but she certainly had those legs locked together. Super height. I thought that was a very nice vault. Yeah, very nice. If anything, shoulders down, but there's a the score, 14.633. The judges agree with you, Christine, there. Well, yes, but you also, they, the shoulders were a little down on the landing. And we haven't seen very much on the beam, this rotation. I do. Gustafsson, 13.966. They're creeping these scores. Oh, it's not the floor. It's not the beam, it's the floor. Oh, but we are. We are going over to the beam to uh, Ruby Harold. We missed her bars, but uh, she obviously performed well. She scored a 14. 14-1, 14 I think. And uh, she's already qualified for bar final from the uh, earlier competition and for beam final. So she's not so renowned for beam as for bars, but we'll be... Uh, She'll be delighted to having to have made beam final and thrilled to be working in this all around European Championships. It's really good for the younger gymnasts to get the experience of this, you know, the first major after an Olympic Games. Real good for building the confidence. So Ruby Harold onto the beam. Bit of an unusual mount here full turn to land just one foot on the beam super high front somersault well held straight back into the backflip and layout moving with good rhythm Very much what the judges want to see. They want to see positive movement. Two leaps, well performed. The change leg into the split jump. And the full spin, one of the required elements. Little pause here. Change leg, ring. Have to take your head right back, lose sight of the beam, and that's what makes it so difficult. And the free cartwheel. And a relatively quiet dismount, full twir turning front somersault. As we said earlier, Ruby's only just back from ankle injury, so uh, not chancing a, a backward landing, but that was a very confident, impressive performance from Ruby Harold. Very solid performance there, and uh, so I think she'll be very proud of that. Uh, look very confident, not many wobbles. I like the start with the lift to handstand into a heely turn, which we would normally see on the parallel bars or the A bars. And uh, real confidence uh, about the routine. That was the front somersault, which uh, she could easily have given up and fallen off on. So front somersault with full turn, it, it, it's a, a C element. 
you, so she won't get quite as much difficulty as if she'd done a D dismount. But you know, that was a really, I'm really impressed with that from Ruby. And a nice little wave there, really enjoying her European experience. And that's yeah. what it's all about. And let's hope in a few years' time, we will see her at the Olympics. And there, Korkina, Svetlana Korkina, one of the great Russian gymnasts. One of, one of the, look, there you go, a real uh, showgirl of gymnastics. And we talk about being a performer. She could really perform and uh, sadly missed. Yes, I think the, uh, there's a few gymnasts here, though, that are looking impressive. Certainly the desire from the, um, the powers that be in women's gymnastics is to try and reward performance. So with, with one piece of apparatus to go, this is how things look. Your dash leads again. She has done all the competition. Now Mustathina moves up into second from third. Grishina moves up from fourth into third. We've got Ruby Harold uh, in ninth there at the top of that scoreboard as well. And um, well, just a word on on Charlie Fellows because she's had a bit of a well, a bit of a shame really, hasn't she? To be honest, with her landings, um, yeah. she didn't do too well on the last piece of apparatus either with a 12.2 on floor. So that puts Ruby. Now you get, well, sorry, Charlie Fellows into 21st place. So the last piece of apparatus then, and I think all eyes really, Hannah, are going to be over on the bars there. Um, it's going to be between Yordash and, um, and Mustafina as well. But Yordash, I mean, she didn't even qualify for the bars final, yet Mustafina is an Olympic champion on that piece of apparatus, and there's only about 0.7 or something separating them. Yeah, I mean, the Romanians aren't known for the, um, to be the strongest on bars, and obviously Mustafina is a really strong bar worker, so... Um, you know, as long as they both go through clean routines, yeah, I mean, well, there's a 0.7 difference, isn't there? But Charlie's so. going to be finishing then on, on vault. You can see she's going to be third up. Um, and I think really, you know, as we were saying, it's all about just getting that experience, getting out there. And I mean, Lewis, you were even saying you probably won't even remember your first Europeans. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you're going to make mistakes earlier on making your debut. Um, but, you know, it's going to happen. They just need to pick themselves up enjoy the competition for what it is yeah. um, and then really build on it for the future. How key do you think it is, Christian, that Mustafina is up last on bars and she's chasing, I mean, she's got the gold in her sights. It's, it's big pressure. Uh, I mean, obviously, she'll go up and see Lodash sort of either do a clean routine or a, a, a bad routine. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot of pressure, especially being in the home country. You can see um, Grishina as well, she's going to be going on beam. She's still in the running as well. She's, she's one of the best in Europe on beam. So this really is going to be a final piece. That is, the Titan, honestly, right? it makes it interesting. Yeah, and Ruby wraps up her competition. Uh, she's going fifth on floor. She's got a very expressive floor, hasn't she? Yeah, she's a really good floor worker and she's got some um, interesting dance moves and choreography. So she really puts on a good performance. So is it possible then for Mustafina to catch your dash? Come on, Hannah. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Maybe. <laughs> I think she will. I think she'll do it. Yeah. Being in Russia as well, with home support, could be close. Yeah, well, she's led the way all along. And it's been, it, it has been all over the shop as far as the low ones. Stein Gruber's done incredibly well. She's now down in fifth. But Ruby Harold going in to the final piece of apparatus in ninth. I mean, she qualified sixth. Do you think she, she would have hoped to have done a little bit better than this, Hannah? Um, no, I think you know, she's had a great competition. I mean, um, she's had a clean competition so far. And she'll just be hoping to do a nice clean floor routine and score as, as best she can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's great experience for her to come out here and be in the all-around final, so yeah. um, you know, it's great whatever. As you're watching this go through, how are you feeling not being there? Um, it is a bit difficult, you know, I've always, always wanted to be out there competing, but you know, it's, in the long run it's the best thing for me to be back at home training and working on some new skills for later on in the year. Yeah, and, and if you had a piece to finish on, which one would that be? Which would you rather go for? Bars, beam, floor, piece of cake? Probably say floor. I'd like say floor, yeah. Why is that? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I do enjoy performing floor, um, so it'd be, it's one of the less nerve-wracking pieces. Mm -hmm. So as long as I've done a good competition, then floor's always a nice one to finish on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you look, you look, we're looking at your dash then. She's in this situation where she's been ahead the whole lot. She knows she's got one of her weakest pieces coming up. What do you do? What's your game play here? I mean, because obviously you've got to try and go as clean as possible. you just got to keep it cool, keep it calm. Don't make any stupid mistakes. Um, it'd be pointless to get all the way to the end and think to try something a bit different and make a mistake. So uh, just keep it cool, keep it calm, keep it collected. She's, uh, quite, she's yeah. quite an experienced competitor now, so 
Yeah. yeah she'll, she'll already know what she's, she knows she's exactly gonna do. what she needs to do. Whether she does it or not, it'll be, uh, we'll yeah. see. Well, there is Mustafina. She's moved up the ranks with every single piece of apparatus. Can she go one more? She's currently in second position behind your dash. Well, we'll head down to the commentary box with Christine Still and Craig Heap. Well, I have to say, I think that Mustafina's got the pressure. Here we start up from the Hungarian gymnast, Dorina Bosco. 13.8 in qualification. Strapped on the wrist, five start value. So Yuchenko, very nice full twist, big hop back on landing, plenty of height, and she doesn't look very happy with that at all, does she? No, obviously it hasn't been a good competition. Um, we haven't been able to see everybody, but that's a, very much a picture of a disappointed gymnast, isn't it? I mean, if you look there off the top, very nice style in the air, great height, almost thinking we could have another twist in there and then a pike down which put a slightly off balance and caused that bounce back if she'd have just stayed nice and straight she'd have been fine the yushenko vaulting we call it after natalia yushenko the first gymnast to do this round of fault has changed vaulting quite a lot. It's quite a precise apparatus now. You can hit the platform with your feet so low that you really can rock it off. And uh, it's changed vaulting considerably for the women. And for the safer as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 13.6, she's finished 50.2, and at the moment she's the first gymnast finished, so she's ranked number one. She needs to take a quick picture of that scoreboard quickly and tweet that picture on to her parents. <laughs> Say, I won the Europeans. Now, there we are. You see Eliza Mangani, the uh, young Italian gymnast with just, uh, like, gauze to cover her hands rather than hand guards. It, it, if you're going to do a lot of the inverted turns, uh, uh, the gymnasts prefer that. They can feel the bars, they feel they have a better grip. Whereas when you're working with hand guards, you're actually swinging around on the dowel and on the leather. And sometimes if the dowel doesn't just sit right on the bar, it can cause problems. So yeah. it, it is definitely a, a bit of an insight into what the gymnast will be doing in the routine. So Eliza Managini, junior European champion. Strong half turn there, super forwards giant, big high Jaeger front somersault, very nice indeed. Oh look, that pirouette finished right in handstand, didn't it? Into Kachev. The more times you can hit handstand and show it positively, the better. As far as the judges are concerned, there we are, pauses in handstand, lifts up, swings high, Half in, double front, dismount. Not the most difficult, but really one of the best executions. Really well. You can almost see the potential in this gymnast uh, with some great work that she's done during this competition. I'm sure her coaches uh, will be very pleased with the way that she's conducted herself there. And like you said, Christine, you just need to look at the height of the releases and the handstands that she hit during the routine was showing great control. Look at that there. The catch air, pointed toes, plenty of height, great catch. You can see the difference how it's quite a different grip without the hand guards on. Very clean dismount as well there. Nice routine, very nice. And happy with that. Nice to get a smile from the gymnast. She's worked pretty cleanly, hasn't she? She looks well in control of her work. It doesn't look, and, and to be honest, she looks ready probably to take her step up. Though I don't actually think we saw her floor routine, so, and I know that that was, she had a little trouble on floor in qualification. Yeah, I, I think the focus is going to stop on the bars. This is where it's all going to happen. Uh, I know a few people have not sure. I'm going to put my neck on the line, definitely, and not only will Mustafina take it, I think she'll overtake her by a mark. I think there's, there's two marks to be had. 13.633, Managini, 13.7, so she obviously did a good floor routine, 55.1, a very good total for a first-year senior. Yeah. 
And Diana Bulimar, she did not have a happy outing on the asymmetric bars in qualification. I'm sure she can do better. There we are, the first move, the Shaposhnikova. Oh, nice pirouette from the clear circle and into the Kachev. A little bit flat, the Kachev, but she's very efficient on these clear circles. Shoot down into handstand, straight back up. She's a tiny little gymnast, but she's hitting her handstands well. Here we have the forward element. Just a fairly straightforward forward giant half turn. Nice stolder. It's quite clean work, if not the most difficult. Full twisting, double back. Well, the smile says it all. It might not be the most difficult, but she was very happy to have got through. Yeah, 12.7 in qualification and uh, looked a lot cleaner routine there. And you just get some idea of how small she is because when she long swings around the high bar, she doesn't have to make any shape change at all in her body. Uh, to, so you get a real uh, insight of how small she actually is. If you look there, you know, great control from the top bar down to the bottom bar. The coach there just in case but not needed and straight back onto the top bar. And the judges have to decide, did she actually hit dead handstand on that low bar? That's the sort of difference, you know, if she hit the handstand, she gets more marks than if she was a shade off. And they only, they only allow 10 degrees. Julia Steingruber has had a great competition so far. Now, it's never great. It's never easy to start on B, but it's even more difficult to finish on B. Here she's ready. She always looks a very relaxed gymnast. Lovely leap onto the end of the beam. Nice, strong pike, front somersault. High. Change leg leap smoothly into the side somersault. There's her sideways dance. Has to be included sideways dance as well as dance low on the beam. The important backflip layout somersault to two feet. She's got a nice supple style. Smooth in the spin. Well landed. The leap with the half turn. Strong free walkover. She was a little offline, but she saved it well. An unusual dismount. Full turning straight gain. It's, it's very difficult. It doesn't look spectacular because it doesn't rise high, but you have to rotate away from the beam in a straight position with a full turn. That was a good performance. I think she's uh, done a very good, clean competition. And certainly with the, the power in the floor and the vaulting, you can see the acrobatic skills being transferred onto the beam there. Landing well on the beam there it is the acrobatic series flick straight back some assault she's not a tiny gymnast and obviously if you're tiny the beam if you know your two feet can stand together on the beam it's quite a lot easier here we are Diana Bullimore 13.66 much better than her qualification score well, I think the pressure will certainly be mounting at that end of the arena. But I'm sure this gymnast, if anybody can cope with the performing on a big stage. There we are, Julia Steingruber, 14.366. That's an excellent score. 57 puts her in first at the moment, and that is a very impressive score from Steingruber. And 
actually it puts her in equal first with Diana Bonimo. So, 257.065. Now, I'm sure Larissa Yordash can go ahead of that, but she will want to post a score that can't be caught. Larissa Yordash from Romania, the leader all the way through the competition. Lovely handstand, smooth, up to the high bar, very nicely done indeed. Swing turn, big high Jaeger somersault. Very clean, lovely handstand shape again. Full pirouette nicely on top of the bar. Big Kachev straight into the pack salto. A little bit of a le loss of leg form, but she got the link straight up to the high bar again. She's fighting and giving it everything. Here we go. Into the full twisting double back, not a flicker. Not a flicker, a much better routine. Yes, uh, there were errors though, weren't they? Looking at that routine, a bit of a loss of form uh, in the back when she transferred through uh, the routine in parts. And uh, she needs 12.466 to take the lead, which I think would be enough. You just see the little flicker in the yeah. legs there yeah, yeah. on the catch head. And as she goes up here, look at the loss of form in the legs. And uh, I'm sure the judges won't miss that. They won't miss it, but I think she actually uh, made a big mistake on it in qualifying. So she'll have been pleased to have achieved it. And the dismount was secure, well landed. It's not fantastic bar work, but you know, she, she'd built herself a big lead, a 0.7 lead. So whatever she gets, um, Mustafina needs to be at least 0.8 better. I think if I was going up, I'd want Mustafina. I'd want about two marks of a lead. So, and Anastasia Grishina, the other run, Russian gymnast in the mix here. Finishing on the beam. She has great skill on this apparatus but it's very easy to make mistakes. Here we go, round off, lay out somersault. She's survived the first hurdle. Smooth spin. Controlled on the side somersault. Lovely hands and arms. But a little bit slow. Free walk over into the jump. Gets a bonus for that. Half turn into handstand, the Anodi. Straight into the illusion turn. Such a difficult link that. She knew she had to go for the link. Lovely splits on the leap. Super supple gymnast. You can see her fighting to concentrate all the way through. Here we have it, the round off, the double pike. She makes it. She is delighted. Whatever the scores, she's done her job in front of her home crowd. Very delighted for her. We've seen her as a Krishina as a gymnast with ups and downs, but today's an up. Great performance there, a lot of pressure going on to beam there. And what style and grace. It was so nice to watch that routine. And, uh, you know, something to be very proud of there. Stands up into that double pike back, slight step back, but nothing to call on the dismount. And a big smile as well to the judges. It was a tiny bit slow. You could feel the pressure coming out of her. But it was beautifully artistic. So your dash, 13.833. So if Mustafina can uh, perform as she did in qualification, she scored a 15 in qualification. She's got a little bit of room to spare, but she can't afford to fall. Well, exactly. And a routine that's packed with difficulty like this, one mistake could cost her the title. She needs anything above 14.533 to steal it. And, uh, you know, how uh, 
upsetting is that to be a gymnast to lead all the way through the competition and then to to lose it on the last piece of apparatus uh, but she has to do the routine she does has to do the routine she's the olympic champion on asymmetric bars alia mustafina she's got some fantastic work but it's very risky look at that handstand stooping now with full turn straight into the shaposhnik of a half turn it's it's going straight from one element to the other that makes the difference in difficulty score lovely high pike jaeger stole the full into the pack salto no bent legs oh lovely half turn straight up to the high bar again now that was a little bit flat toe on and off with full pirouette into the full twisting dismount that's enough that's enough just a little shuffle on the landing well what a performance what pressure and and she still doesn't look happy with that <laughs> she was a bit late on one or two of the pirouettes and you can see she's such a perfectionist she'll be oh it could have been a bit better but she knows in her heart that that's good enough well from the first move to me it set it out she banged into that handstand it was almost to say i'm in control of this routine uh, just watch the master at work and uh, i think she performed immensely and uh, not forgetting olympic champion should be able to walk out and a uh, european should be a walk in the park <laughs> as if i dare say so but uh, you know what a performance there Anastasia Krishina, 14.133. So that puts her second behind your dash at the moment. So she's in the medals, Krishina. So is your dash. We just have to see what the judges are going to credit Mustafina with. Great execution there. The legs are nailed together, toes pointed. And the score, 15.133. First place, a massive score of 59. And uh, what a fabulous result. She's such an accomplished gymnast, such an all-round gymnast. There isn't a piece of apparatus that she can't perform well on. No, a great performance there, and uh, she'll be a lot happier than that uh, with that performance now. And uh, it's, she's, she's held herself well, trailing all the way around the competition, but having the confidence to know that you're going to a piece like uh, the bars, which is your best piece last, gives you a real boost. And uh, yes, well-deserved winner today, I think. Absolutely, and we've seen, you know, we've witnessed on the public stage her rise as a great junior get a terrible injury fight back from the injury and come back really when she wasn't completely on top of her work and we've seen her gradually gradually come right back to being right on top of her work but also your dash as well I must say she didn't have a great Olympics your dash she was suffering from injury and it's fabulous to see her working so confidently here Yes, and uh, unfortunately the bars did let her down at the end of the day and, and I'm sure uh, in the back of your mind you know that you're going up against the Olympic champion on that piece of apparatus. It does throw a bit of doubt into your mind and, and knock your confidence a little bit. But uh, she went up there and she gave it her all in my opinion and, uh, you know, something she's got to be pleased with that. And a silver in the all rounds not a bad day at the no, office. No, no. Um, and against an outstanding gymnast uh, you know she certainly she as did Grishina they all worked at their best and that's really what you want from a gymnastic competition you want to see everybody work at their best and the best gymnasts come out the top yeah and uh, I, I'm really impressed with uh, the Swiss gymnast Steingruber fourth 57.065 equal fourth I mean that that's got to be a massive improvement Yep, that's that. Uh, she had upped her work considerably since the Olympics, and there were a few bits that uh, that looked um, that she was pleased to to do successfully. But she's a great competitor, Steingruber as well. 
So a, queen, a clean sweep so far for the Russians uh, overall champion in the men earlier today and uh, in the women's there. Absolutely, and we didn't manage to see Ruby Harold on full or, but she scored a 13-4, which puts her into eighth position, which is a fantastic achievement. Top 10, there we are, and here, Mustafina first. I think there's something special about uh, winning a title in your own country. I guess the, the guys in the uh, studio uh, will agree that, uh, you know, to, to win a medal in your own country when uh, the pressure's on is, is a really special feeling. And I certainly think that the occasion and the home support have really helped her in this competition. Yes, as we said earlier, sometimes the sort of home support can be a bit of a pressure. But in this occasion, it was uh, definitely a, an asset. The gymnasts rose to that situation, but they're great gymnasts. They can do these routines. They train hard. They can do them many times over. And uh, if you know you can do your work, then the support of the home crowd, as was seen with our gymnasts and athletes at the London Olympics, it was a really big asset to them. And your dash is definitely a little bit disappointed. She gave it her everything. She knows she needs to go back and work hard. And there's Ruby Harold, delighted with her performance. Yeah, some work to be done on the bars there. 13.833 against Mustafina at 15.133. So it was a massive jump uh, uh, on the asymmetric bars there. And you can see great comradeship amongst all the gymnasts. They've, you know, grown up over the years, competed as juniors together, compete now as seniors. Lots of respect for each other, and every, every gymnast works enormously hard. You're not able to be at this level without uh, giving your whole life to it, really. No, and a lot of these gymnasts uh, will have trained uh, with other gymnasts from other parts of the country. We have training camps. We used to have training camps abroad with the French and the Russians. So you get a real camaraderie. And, and when you go to competition, yes, you want to win. Uh, but, it, you know, there's that real sense of comradeship and congratulating the person that does well on the day. Result list. Well, so there we have it then, the results of the women's all-around European Championships. Alia Mustafina is successful. I mean, what a performance she had. She came up every single piece of apparatus. She climbed, she climbed, she climbed, and then, well, the Olympic champion on bars took it, the European Championships all-around. Ahead of your Dasha, Grishina, Bulimar and Steingruber joint fourth as well. Ruby Harold finishes eighth, so she's well inside of the top ten. And Charlie Fellows finishes 18th down on the second page. So you predicted it, Anna, you did say, you know, that Mustafina, well, she can do it. And she did. Yeah, she's a, she's a very mature and experienced competitor now. Um, you know, she's kind of been there, done that, and uh, she knew exactly what, it, what she needed to do uh, on all four pieces, and especially last piece, her, her best piece, bars. Yeah. And she banged out that there. Fantastic routine, so. I know. It's slightly gutting, though, for your dash, don't you think, to be leading for three pieces and then suddenly... Well, she, I mean, she obviously knew it was coming. Oh, obviously. I mean, she probably knew at the back of her head that bars wasn't going to be her greatest piece, but she gave herself every the best opportunity she could have to, uh, to hold on to lead her. But I think, in the end, I think it was set up for Mustafina to win. She was in Russia. It was yeah. on her best piece. She was last up in the competition, so... I think, uh, yeah, she deserved it in the end. Yeah, and Steingruber, absolutely worth the mention, Lewis, because, yeah. I mean, we, we said it, didn't we, halfway through, oh, you know, she's had her best pieces of apparatus, you know, we'll prepare to see her fall away now, and actually, she just kept that consistency. Yeah, she, I mean, she really impressed me, she did. I mean, she showed that she's now, you know, with the rest of the pedigree, she's right up there, um, and she's definitely one to watch over the next coming few years. Um, you know, her vaults and her floor work was absolutely amazing. 
um, it was good to see a, 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 um, asymmetric bars has improved as well. So she's definitely one to watch and fair play to her. Yeah, exactly. and it's such a different discipline, isn't it, being the all-around gymnast as opposed to being, you know, a specialist as such. So it's somebody like Steingruber to work on those other pieces, suddenly she's up there with the best in the world all around, as well as being a very strong vaulter and a very strong floor worker. Yeah, and I think that is, uh, it shows, you know, a true athlete, the ones that can, you know, do the all around and still find time to find their specialist piece and really work on that individually as well. Yeah. Um, so she's done absolutely brilliant to kind of be up there with the Russians and the Romanians, um, and she's doing wonders for you know for, for Switzerland and, and, yeah. and gymnastics on the map in her country. So for your dash, then is it a case of get back to the gym and just just hammer, 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 bar work, bar work, bar work? Because you know she didn't make a final. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I said before, Romanians aren't known for their. Uh, their bar work, but um, you know, I'm sure they, they work on as just as hard on that piece as they do every other piece. It just doesn't come yeah. um, as naturally. But um, I'm sure she'll be back in the gym working really hard trying to improve that bar score. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's. I mean, Mustafina. Just she is beautiful, absolutely beautiful gymnast. Obviously, with goes without question. And style and elegance all the way through. Not just enough in a bar work, of course, but floor work as well. I mean, just look at the height that she gets. Yeah, I mean, she's, um, she's really expressive on floor, um, very neat and tidy and clean. There's not much deduction that you can take um, on her floor routines. And, and great, I mean, mentally as well, I mean, very difficult to kind of be chasing all the time and not quite make it, not quite make it, but know that you've got a phenomenal bar routine with, with great skill and an immense difficulty. I think she knew that um, finishing on bars was going to be um, a good thing for her because she knew it was her best piece. Um, and as long as she did clean routines on every other piece and then hit that bar routine, she was uh, in with a chance of winning I think the it's gold. worth to mention, she, you know, she was last up yeah. in, her, in Russia, in her own country. Um, you know, she would have been feeling the pressure, so to go through the way she did was, was fabulous. Yeah, and you've got that mix, haven't you? You've always got that kind of conundrum of how difficult do you go with how beautifully you can execute things. And when you look at the two gymnasts, maybe one must have been slightly more dynamic than your dash, perhaps, you know, in, when you're looking at the difficulty and the powerhouse and the style of gymnastics. But, you know, you're, I, I guess in the gym, Hannah, you're constantly working more difficult moves, but you've got to be able to, without question, execute them to the best. Yeah, Mustafina has been known um, to always have have the high start values and the, the difficult skills but as well as that she's always been one to compete them beautifully with um, very artistically and with uh, very few deductions that's been one of her you know things that she's been known for yeah and do you think she knew as soon as she landed your dash that actually you know she was kind of not handing it on a plate but giving her you know opening the door for most I, of I think she knew it wasn't her best bar routine um, uh, there was a few uh, um, technical errors, you know, deductions that were taken away that she kind of knew will have uh, dampened her score. Yeah, well, a lot of the uh, gymnasts that you've seen in the all-round competition, you'll get the chance to see again in the individual apparatus finals, which start for us uh, tomorrow. So we will be in the commentary box and you can hear us and join us on the red button if you would like. You can see uh, Max Whitlock and Sam Oldham, they're going to be on the floor. Pommel Horse, we've got Max Whitlock again and Dan Keatings. And High Bar, well, that's what well, actually be tomorrow. This will be a little bit later, but these are the list of the gymnasts that have made finals from Great Britain. So we've got Sam Oldham, Ashley Watson there as well, and uh, Rebecca Downey, Ruby Harold, who we saw on bars as well. Uh, they're going to be competing on even bars, and then Ruby Harold again on beam. So what a successful qualification this has been. I mean, we did wonder, didn't we? Well, I did anyway. Is there going to be a bit of a hangover after the Olympics? But, you know, for the sake of Great Britain to come here and to make so many finals, Christian, I mean... Definitely, and it's great to see some new names in there as well. Yeah. Um, well, Ashley Watson, exactly. for example. I mean, lots of people will not have heard of Ashley, and uh, he's, he's been dogged with injury, hasn't he, throughout yeah. his career? He, I mean, he's been really unlucky the last few years with a tour ACL and then a tour Achilles. Um, and so he's had some real setbacks, but he's kept going and kept going, and he's been given the opportunity, and he's gone out there and made a high bar final, and yeah. it really is a really special high bar routine. So he's got every chance for a medal. And can he keep his composure, though? I mean, because that, like you thing. said, I mean, he hasn't had that much experience on the yeah. world stage. Yeah, there is going to be a lack of experience, but I think the other lads out there will be sort of giving him a few points and trying to. So keep him calm, yeah. not to get, to get too excited, just try and not to be looking for a medal, but just go out there and just try and do a clean job and enjoy the experience because 
he, uh, if he does well here, then he opens the door for other, other obviously, big internationals. Yeah, and uh, as well, Max, obviously, on Pommelhorst, second highest qualifier behind uh, your good old mate, Christian Berge. He has been your nemesis, yeah. hasn't he, Lewis? Yeah, this, has is his this is his, uh, his all-around performance uh, from earlier uh, today. So, yeah, just talk us through this, Lewis. Well, it's, it's, I think where he can pick up is his sheer right at the start. He, I mean, he bends his leg, that's three temps hitting the pommel horse. So that's three temps he can save straight away and get him right up there, you know, very close to Christian Berkey. Um, knee, legs are together, toes are pointed. And, you know, the only really thing you can take off now is his ha hands aren't in line. He's, he's quite skewed on the pommel. Yeah. Um, Skewing is where you put one hand in front of the other, yeah. just for those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if you're a little bit sideways on the pommel, um, it can be a tenth each circle. Uh, which you know can amount to quite a lot. So I mean, it's literally when it comes down to it, you know he has so much potential on the pommel horse, and it is fine tuning. Yeah, it is iron and out all those creases. But I mean, wonderful composure though to keep that because it was his penultimate piece. He knew he was in the run for a medal. This then his final piece of apparatus rings, and um, well, not the strongest of pieces, but you know, was it a good one for him to finish on? I think it was a safe one for him to finish on. Um, you know, rings is one of those pieces where you don't really make too many mistakes. Um, so for his benefit, it's better than finishing on something like Pommel Horse or the High Bar. Yeah. Um, it really was a stable piece for him to finish on. Again, it's that, it's that random draw, Christian, isn't it, where you, 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 know, where you end up finishing is, is anyone's guess, really, as soon as you pull it all out. But, um, yeah, I think it was just a phenomenal all-round performance from him. And it, it was that method where he says, I'm just going to go through my routines, I'm going to see what happens. And if you nail them at this level, it's surprising what can happen. Exactly, and I mean, he's got all the, the sort of tricks in the bag and he's got so much potential and he's very good at handling the pressure and competing at big situations. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, he, he really could do great things for Great Britain in, the, in this sport. And I think this is hopefully a, a stepping stone platform onto yeah. bigger and better things. Well, this is the thing. I mean, for you lads, you've kind of made everybody realise what is possible and all the younger gymnasts that are coming through. And especially, I mean, you look at our juniors and I mean, it's just the strength within the British team is yeah. just, I mean, it is incredibly exciting for all those that are watching thinking, oh, what's going to happen now? You lads aren't there. Well, this is the answer. I mean, that was the whole point as well, is to get the ball rolling. Um, you know, we wanted to kind of encourage the kids and show what is possible. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you can see people like Max nationally making finals, it's just brilliant. Well, let's see what Max had to say about it. Well, Max, congratulations, your first senior European medal. Thank you very much. I'm really happy with that. I, um, my aim was to go out there and do clean routines and um, hopefully similar routines to the qualification round. And um, I'm happy to do that, so I'm really happy with the silver medal. You mentioned the qualification round, obviously you're the highest scorer coming into the final, but you were still right up there, very close to that total and a good result. Yeah, I'm really happy with that score. That was, um, it's a round of score I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for a bit higher than that, but I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, like I said, I've done six team routines and that was my aim. And, um, you know, I'm, uh, for me to come to go into that in first place, uh, it shows, that, shows to myself that I've got the potential to do that. So that's what I'm really happy with. So Max Whitlock then finished behind David Valievsky, who took the gold. And we can have a, a look at the women's medal ceremony now. So Mustafina took gold, your dash, silver, and Grishina, who takes the bronze. I mean, you know, they were saying in commentary about Russia to perform in front of a home crowd, to receive these medals in front of a home crowd, what it actually feels like, and you know well, more than anybody what that feels like, obviously with London 2012. And I mean, I'd never experienced an atmosphere like it. I can't imagine what it must have been like for you down there. I mean, it's a very stressful environment, um, but then it's so rewarding when you do do well and you get your medals. It's, uh, it's fantastic, it really is. Well, for your dash, she led three of the pieces, but then had to settle for silver in the end. The sterling performance from her. No doubt it is just back to the gym and just dismount after dismount, release and catch after release and catch. And somebody who knows all about that is, of course, Alia Mustafina, the Olympic champion. She takes the gold in the women's all round. The four pieces of apparatus. And yeah, what a moment indeed to take that gold medal alongside David Balievsky from Russia, who took gold in the men's all around. What do you do with the flowers? 
Lewis, when you get yours? I normally it's... give them to my mum. <laughs> Do you? But if I know if I'm going to be away for a while and they're gonna, the flowers are going to die and I normally throw them into the crowd. Right. Well, if I spot a nice girl, I'll give them to her. Sometimes oh, right. the cleaner gets them as well. Yeah, what the <laughs> cleaner in the hotel. <laughs> the cleaner in the hotel. Well, I'm sure that uh, well, Mr. Fader's mum would probably get those. I think it would be something very special indeed to be crowned European champion in front of that home crowd. And there's the top eight then, so Bullimar Steingruber. Saldu, she did so well, didn't she, Steingruber? Mahenegi as well from Italy, definitely worth a mention. And Ruby Harold finishes in eighth. All in all, I mean, we said that Ruby had qualified sixth. I mean, to come here to get this kind of experience, we know she's still quite a young gymnast. Um, she's got to be happy with an eighth. Oh, yeah, it's a great result for her. I mean, um, she'll be really happy with that. She had a clean competition um, and her overall score of 54.6. Fantastic. Fina takes gold ahead of Rissa Yordash. Grashina takes the bronze. So Russia at first and third. There we go. And uh, well, what a competition. I mean, Mustafina, she qualified in fourth and then ends up taking the gold. So, what are the chances of we seeing more gymnastics over the next few days? Well, quite well, actually. The apparatus finals you can join us for uh, featuring floor, pommel horse, uneven bars start uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. That is on the red button. And then we'll have the Apparatus Finals highlights uh, on BBC Two. That's on Sunday at 1 pm. And what a great lineup of sport we've got for you over the next few days. The World Snooker Championships start tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So it's time to relax and just enjoy, sit back and watch that unfold for the next 17 days. We'll have action there for you. At Football Focus tomorrow at uh, quarter past 12. They're on the road from the Hawthorns tomorrow, that's quarter past 12. And then there's some rugby league for you. Whole KR versus St. Helens. You can see that from quarter past two on BBC One. And there you have it, so plenty to get your teeth into. But looking ahead then for the individual apparatus finals, can Whitlock beat Berkey? Well, I think, um, you know, Berkey's human. Um, yes, he is. He, he can make mistakes. And, uh, it's a difficult question to ask that, isn't it, for you? Because he has been your nemesis for so long. So I do apologise for that. And, uh, you know, I've beaten him um, a few times of my own. Yes. So uh, it yeah. is possible. Um, Max just needs to keep a cool head. Um, and Daniel, if, you know, if he squeezes all his... Well, this out. is it. Daniel Keatings is back. Bro, we're so delighted mm. to see him. And he has been incredibly dogged with injury. But he can definitely beat Berkey because he has done, didn't he? 2000. He has indeed. So it, it, it's going to be a very interesting pommel final. Yeah. Um, I'm just glad I'm not in it. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Highlight from today for you, Christian, what do you reckon? Oh, it's got to be Max just finishing off his all round competition on rings and uh, yeah. coming away with a silver medal. Really well deserves. Exactly. Hannah? Uh, I'll say Ruby as well, you know, clean competition. Be, be fantastic. Okay, Lewis, very quickly. It's got to be Max. It's Max. It's Max. Get, well, the first Max, medley. Max got a bronze, didn't he, in the Olympics? He got a silver here in the all around. What will tomorrow bring? Well, let's keep everything crossed and hope you can join us then. Bye bye. Thank you.